this historical moment, though, I've had a lot of my friends ask me, well, what's going on with the pro-life movement now? What is the next chapter, right? Do we get to focus on other issues? Do we get to, uh, you know, ignore politics like we've wanted to be doing for years? And my answer to them is this, Goliath just hit the ground, okay? What did David do? This is a quiz. What did David do after Goliath hit the ground? He cut his head off. Now that didn't make the child's Bible, the child's version of the Bible. But it's true. Goliath hits the ground and it's not over. Shocking moment in the battle, but not over. David gets up, walks over to Goliath, takes out the sword and ends Goliath's life. Finishes the job. Okay, that's not even over yet. It wasn't time to celebrate after that. Okay, who can tell me what happened after David actually defeated Goliath? What happens next? Okay, the Philistines started running away. And what did the Israelites do? Throw a party? No, they chased after them. Even though Goliath was knocked down, the war was not over. And it is true for us as well. You see, the enemy retreated and they tried to gain higher ground. They tried to hide to fight another day, another battle on their own terms. Remember, Goliath is the one that set the terms for the first battle and he lost, but they retreated to live another day to fight. It is true for us as well. We are at a critical moment where Goliath has just hit the ground. The deadliest Supreme Court ruling in our nation's history has officially been overturned, but the enemy is not ready to give up. They are retreating, they are regrouping, and they are becoming very creative in how they're gonna try to fight this battle moving forward. There is now a level of hostility and creativity from the culture of death that I have personally never seen before. Just to give you one example, there's a pro-abortion group that is raising money right now to remodel a cargo ship and turn it into a floating abortion clinic so that they can drive it into the Gulf of Mexico right outside our jurisdiction, right into international waters, and then ferry women from the Gulf states to it and sell them elective abortions. Three years ago, I could not have predicted that this is where we would be in the United States. But this is what I mean. The enemy is regrouping. And so I am the president of Texas Rights to Life now, but I'm a policy guy. So I do wanna highlight three priorities just to show you the type of thinking going on in Texas Right to Life's offices, what we're strategizing, what the conversations we're having with our partners about what this fight looks like next. Our first priority is enforcement. We actually need to enforce our pro-life laws and hold the abortion industry accountable. You all know that just because abortion is illegal, that doesn't mean that Texas is abortion free, okay? We already have major Texas cities passing resolutions that direct their law enforcement to ignore any reports of illegal abortions. We also have lawless district attorneys around Texas who have publicly declared their intent not to enforce life-saving pro-life laws, even if they have evidence that a doctor broke those laws. Texas Right to Life is already working with elected officials on what policy tools we can adapt and what we can do as a movement to make sure that our laws really are enforced and saving lives. Another area of enforcement is abortion-inducing drugs. We have been working with legislators on responding to this new troubling trend where a doctor in the Netherlands is using a pharmacy in India to mail abortion-inducing drugs directly to women in Texas to mail it directly to their homes and to mail it directly to their dorm rooms. Their target audience have been college campuses. We've seen popping up around college campuses, these little stickers in bathrooms and uh, all around campus that have a QR code. 
And if a student scans that QR code, it takes them to an illegal website where they can order abortion-inducing drugs to have them mailed directly to them. These are just some of the creative ways that the culture of death is seeking to stay alive even though their Goliath, Roe v. Wade, has fallen. But we don't just want an abortion-free Texas, a Texas right to life. I know everyone in here, we don't just want to stop abortion. We actually want to create a pro-life state. And so what we're working on, yep. So the building a pro-life Texas agenda includes things like reforming our adoption and CPS law. It includes removing barriers for pregnant and parenting students. Our state colleges should not punish students whenever they choose life after, expect, uh, after facing an unexpected and difficult pregnancy. Another issue that we have always fought for in the Texas State Legislature, which you've heard about before, is the Alternatives to Abortion program. This program is a statewide network of nonprofit pregnancy centers, maternity homes, adoption agencies, and these providers help women choose life and thrive. But would you believe it? The Texas Democrat Party actually put it in their platform, their official platform this year, that they want to defund this program and shut down nonprofits helping women. So they accuse us of only being pro-birth and then they attack the program that the pro-lifers created to give free services to women. I could get sidetracked on this point all night, so I won't, but it's ridiculous. And so I do wanna take a second. If you uh, work for a pregnancy center, maternity home, or adoption agency, would you stand up just for one second so we can thank you for your life-changing work? And you've already heard about our third legislative priority from Emily Cook, that we are still dedicated, even in this post row world, to protecting vulnerable patients. Patients like Tinsley Lewis, right? We have real work to do when it comes to applying our pro-life principles to medical ethics and how we treat patients in hospitals. Texas is one of the worst when it comes to being pro-life when it comes to vulnerable patients. We want to repeal the anti-life 10-day rule, and Texas is in dire need of some truly life-affirming laws that make sure patients can continue to receive their life-sustaining treatment while they and their loved ones help transfer them to a different care environment, like you heard from Emily. We're gonna keep on representing and helping those vulnerable patients and their families. We are not backing down because the Lord has called us to this work. And personally, he's confirmed to me that we are exactly where he wants us to be. So we're gonna faithfully obey his call and rest assured that he is in control, he is good, and this ultimately is his battle for life. I'm honored to be a part of it, and I'm honored that you're gonna partner with us in this next chapter. It is a great time to celebrate what the Lord has already done and to realize what he's calling us to. So thank you for joining me this evening.